Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In this video, we are going to be solving some uh, posture per question of the topic thirds. Now we're done with all the concepts. What's left for us to do now is just practice some posture per questions. And that's exactly what I'll be doing. This is a question from May June 2020, variant two, va uh, paper two, variant two, okay? And as always, if you're new here, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and do hit the bell icon so that you stay updated uh, whenever I upload a new video. Okay. so. It says the point one minus root p, uh, one minus root five comma p lies on the curve. So we're given the equation of the curve, which is also insert form. Find the exact value. Now, the, whenever the question asks us to find the exact value, it means that we're gonna give our answer insert form, okay? So if it's, let's say root two, then we're gonna leave it in the form of root two, and we're gonna not write it in decimal, okay? So this is uh, pretty much, uh, as far as the, uh, the concept is concerned, it's pretty simple. You're gonna plug in the value of x, you're gonna find the value of y. But before we do that, uh, there's a lot of simplification that we need to do in order to get our answer the way the question wants us to. Okay, so like I said, so we plug in y, which is p in place of y, which is equal to 10 plus two under root five over, in place of x, we're gonna write one minus root five, and then the whole thing squared. Okay, now, what do we do next? Well, next we need to simplify, okay? And the best place to start is to first find out what is one minus root p, the whole thing square. And in order to expand this, we will have to use the identity a square minus two ab plus b square. So one squared, which is one minus two into one into under root five plus under root five, the whole thing squared. Now, if you're thinking that we could have done this in one step, then go right ahead, nothing to worry about. So one is going to be one, one squared is going just going to be one minus two under root five plus five. So one plus five becomes six, six minus two under root five. So that means now this is where we are. So we have 10 plus two under root five in the numerator and six minus two under root five in the denominator. Now we don't leave our answers like this because this is not rationalized. The denominator needs to be rationalized, which means there should be no square root in the denominator whatsoever. So we do just that and I'll continue from here. So we rationalize by multiplying the numerator as well as the denominator by the denominator itself, except that we'll change the sign in between. So here we have six minus two under root five, so we'll multiply it by six plus two under root five, numerator as well as the denominator. Okay, now let's see what happens in the numerator. So 10 into six becomes 60. So we have 60 plus 20 under root five. Okay, that's what 10 into two under root five is plus two root five into six, so that's gonna be 12 under root five and plus two root five into two root five, so two and two get multiplied, that makes it four, root five and root five makes it five. In the denominator, however, we have a plus b, a minus b, which means a squared, so that's six squared, minus two squared, which is four, and root five squared, which is five. So we'll do this in the next step. Okay, now, four into five is 20, which means 60 plus 20 is gonna be 80. Okay, plus 20 root five plus 12 root five, so that's gonna be 32 under root five. And then in the denominator, we have six square, which is 36 and four times five, which is 20, 36 minus 20, which is equal to 16. Now, if you look at it, 80, 32 and 16, they're all multiples of 16. So that means we can write 16 separately like this, 80 upon 16 plus 32 upon 16 under root five, and we can simplify it, 80 upon 16, it's five, but just to be on the safe side, otherwise I'll have to make this video all over again, uh, is five and 32 upon 16 is two root five. So there you go. This right here, fellas, is the value of P. Now I will suggest to use your calculator and check. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do just that. So 10 plus two under root five and in the denominator, we'll have one minus root five, bracket close, the whole thing square. And that's what we get, five plus two under root five. I hope you can see. And that means five marks in the back for sure. Okay, so that was one question. I hope you've understood this. Here we have another question, which is from October, November, 2017, paper two, variant three. Now, the reason why I've chosen this question is because it's slightly uh, different than the questions that uh, we just did earlier, okay? So whenever you're presented with a fraction that contains third, or in fact, any fraction that has different denominators and you're asked to simplify. So what we do is we take the LCM, right? So here, if you take the LCM, it's a no brainer. That's gonna be root three minus one, a minus b into a plus b, okay? In the numerator, however, we're gonna multiply p by root three plus one. So that becomes p under root three plus p 
and uh, 1, which is the numerator of the other fraction, gets multiplied by root 3 minus 1. So that means this becomes plus root 3 minus 1. And what is this equal to? This is equal to q plus 3 under root 3. Now, in this particular question, we're going to be doing something that's called comparing. Okay. Now, you might haven't heard of that before, but uh, do pay close attention to what I'm doing. So in the denominator, we'll just collect all the like terms in the sense that all the terms that have root 3 with them together and all the terms that don't have root 3 with them together, okay? Uh, integers, basically. So p root 3 plus root 3. So that I can write as p root 3 plus root 3 plus p minus 1. In the denominator, we have root 3 into uh, root 3 minus 1 into root 3 plus 1, which means a minus b into a plus b, which becomes a square minus b square. So root 3 squared is going to be 3. 1 squared is going to be 1. So that's 2 which is equal to q plus 3 under root 3, okay? Now, do bear in mind that p and q are integers, okay? It says in the question. So now we cross multiply. So we multiply 2 with q plus 3 under root 3. So that means p under root 3 plus under root 3 plus p minus 1. So everything just as it is, copy paste, equals to 2q plus 2 3 under root 3, which means 2 into 3, that's 6, 6 under root 3, okay? Now, before I do this method called comparison, there is something that we need to do. So you have root three here and you have root three here. So what if I take root three common? So if I take root three common inside the bracket, I will have p plus one because what we have with root three here is p and what we have with root three, since we don't see anything, that means there's a one, you know, it's understood that there's a one. And the reason why I've written it like this, you know, normally you'd expect to write root three outside and then p plus one is because it's gonna make it easier for us to do this thing called compare, okay? And this is equal to, sorry, so you have a plus p minus one from before, which is equal to, now I'm just gonna change the order slightly and why I'm doing that, you will understand in a minute. Okay, so now here's what I want you to understand, but this method is called comparison, okay? And we're gonna solve this with the help of this particular method that I just mentioned. So here's how this works. So it is because of this p plus one under root three that we got this six under root three, okay? So that means just this part of the expression on the left-hand side is actually equal to six under root three, okay? There's no way p minus one would have, would have anything to do with six under root three because this is an integer. If you simplify this, you get an integer at the end also, okay? So it is because of this p minus one that we got uh, with under root three that we got six under root three. So what that means is that this p plus one, which you can say is sort of the coefficient of under root three, on the left hand side is going to be equal to the coefficient of under root three on the right hand side. So what that means is straight away that p plus one equals six, which means p equals to what? p equals to five. And there you go, you have the value of p. Now, how do we find the value of q? Well, let's identify all the constants or all the integers on the left hand side. So they're going to be p minus one. So those are the integers on the left hand side and they will be equal to the integer on the right hand side. So that means p minus one equals to two q. And now that we already have the value of p, we're gonna use that, which means five minus one equals to two q. Let's write this nicely. Two q is equals to four. And then if you solve for the value of q, q is equals to four divided by two, which means it's equal to two. So this method is called comparison, okay? Or we have solved this with the help of comparing. Usually we call this comparing of coefficients, but normally that is when variables are involved, okay? But variables weren't really involved over here, but the method remains the same, that we're just comparing what we have on the left-hand side with what we have on the right-hand side. To just give you an idea, let's say that if you have six under root three, and if someone tells you that this is equal to q under root three, okay? So it's it's a no-brainer that the value of q is equals to six, okay? This is just a separate example. It's got nothing to do with this question, just by the way. So that's exactly what we have used in this question also, okay? And let me know in the comment section if uh, this is a method that you're already familiar with, okay? If not, then I hope what I've done here helps you understand how it works. And that's it. That brings me to the end of this video. I will see you guys in the next video with some more uh, complex password questions. So see you then. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.